Hey, what's up guys? Pat Burke, MBS, and I am going to take you through 16.4. So this is a pretty awesome looking workout. It's called a chipper. It's a 13 minute AMRAP. We're going to start at 55 deadlifts, then we're going to move on to 55 wall balls, and then 55 calories on the rower, and then 55 handstand push-ups. The reality is, is very few people are going to get through the RX version of this workout. Um, making it all the way to handstand push-ups. As a matter of fact, maybe a lot of people won't get to the handstand push-ups and they'll just get stuck on that row. So this is, uh, or the RX version of this workout is with a 225 deadlift, a 225, 155 deadlift, 2014 to a 10 and nine foot target, girls and guys. Um, the row is, is uh, the same, just a row. Um, and then handstand push-ups only for your RX. For the scale division, we have 135, 95, 20, 10 to nine foot, um, same calorie row, and then handstand, uh, the handstand push-ups is actually hand release push-ups. Then Masters got a little, I think they do push presses there instead of the handstand push-ups. Um, so uh, there's a lot going on here, a lot I wanna talk about. Um, I'm just gonna, say right off the bat that uh, I think that a lot of people are probably gonna try and do this workout as RX because they probably can do 225, 155 deadlifts. Um, they could probably do the wall balls and they could probably get a lot of work done getting into that rower. So there's nothing um, like the handstand pushups are not right in the middle or at the beginning. So you could probably plan on doing this workout as RX. Um, you, you always do have that scaled option, uh, like if the deadlift or wall ball, you think that might beat you up just so bad that it just wouldn't be fun, then you definitely have that scaled option. But I see a lot of people being able to do that 225, uh, the deadlift and the wall ball, even if it's just a battle. So um, that being said, I'm just gonna kind of talk about the uh, doing it, the RX version. All right, so, Tips on movements here. Um, deadlift, first one. There's a few things. I'm walking over here to the deadlift. So the deadlift, we need to begin at the with the weight on the ground and then stand shoulders behind the bar and then hips and knees open. So come in here. So everybody knows the deadlift. Um, it is important to point out though that a lot of people are gonna try shorten the deadlift not fully opening their knees, not fully opening the hips, and those reps won't count. We need to fully stand up each time. That doesn't mean that we need to fully stand back like this. Um, so here's my tips. <laughs> uh, grip, so this is a reverse grip. It's gonna save you a ton. Um, putting your hands one forward, one back. Additionally, on a high rep deadlift with kind of a medium weight, if you can, people with stronger deadlifts, if they see this weight as not being too heavy. Um, there's something I call the monkey grip, and it's where, it's where we grip the bar a little bit further down in the fingers. So we're not kind of curling it like that, but we're releasing it some, and just right there in the fingertips, and that's gonna save your, your grip. And also, it's small, but about a half inch that it lowers the bar. So we have a reverse grip. Um, we're gonna to wanna to keep that deadlift bar close to our body. It's gonna be really important in these first two movements to save your, save your back. Um, so we really wanna ensure that uh, we're keeping that bar close to the body. Chalk, of course. Um, and then on the deadlift, a belt is gonna save you uh, quite a bit, saving your back. Um, not only does the belt support the back, uh, it can be used to support, but really, I see it in, um, just helping you remember to keep your back flat. A lot of times we, uh, especially when we get fatigued, we start right on the back and we don't really notice that we do it. That belt will give you that immediate feedback to keep your back flat and to keep the work being done in your legs and glutes. So the next move is a wall ball. Um, you can probably keep the belt on going from the deadlift to the wall ball. If you haven't ever done belted wall balls, it's, it's pretty effective. Um, Knee sleeves can help out quite a bit. You're obviously going through a squat, and if you get a little bit of support in that squat through a knee sleeve, that's gonna help. 
Um, there's a couple things here. We want to rest our arms in the air. So when we throw this ball up, I'm not gonna do a full squat, but when I throw the ball up, I'm gonna drop my arms down versus leaving them up there that entire time. Okay, so here, drop, drop. And so you're catching here and then sending it off here. Also, there's a little trick I learned in an open workout actually, is where on your rest, can you, can you hear me from being that far back? <laughs> on your rest, you can rest with the ball right here. And actually when we get into the pacing tips, I'm gonna, I would suggest, um, in order to save your back, doing smaller sets with very short rest periods. So this would be a, what I consider a way to do um, a short rest period. So you wall ball set and lean here for a second versus having to drop it down and immediately go again. Um, I don't know, I might have to check the rules on that. I don't know if the ball has to touch the ground on every, between each set. Uh, what was the last one? Oh yeah, cranking the neck. So a lot of times people doing the wall balls are way up here like this. Just remember that we're gonna need to breathe, so keep your head in a neutral position, looking up through your eyebrows, okay? Getting oxygen to all your working muscles is really important, so anything that you can do to, to facilitate that, it's gonna help you out. All right, calorie row. I suggest doing a low damper. Four to six is where I'd be at. Probably, I would just choose five on this one. Um, after all of that fatigue, I know people are like, oh, I can do heavy, strong rower, I'm a strong rower. Good for you. Um, but that's, are you a strong rower after doing 55 deadlifts and 55 wall balls? Likely not, you're gonna be very tired. So put the damper down so that you're um, not burning up your legs. That might be different if you're six foot four and you rode in college, but for most people, just medium sized people, where the rower kind of kicks their butt, keep the damper down, get on it, start plugging away, and that's gonna be your best bet. Um, I do this thing on the rower where I go hard for five, I pick it up, one, two, three, four, five, then I go easy for three, one, two, three, and I just repeat that process. Whether it's 5-3, 6-3, 6-4, 10-5, it doesn't matter. I really like having my mind um, busy, occupied as I'm on the rower. Otherwise, you just start sitting down, sitting down, getting fatigued, and before you know it, you look at your monitor and you're rowing like a mile an hour. So having some sort of uh, system just to keep you on track. And good music, having some good music pumping and so you can just put your mind somewhere else and just just go at the handstand push-ups if you do get there obviously we want to um i wrote hands wide but actually the deal is is you come up here you're going to put your feet against the wall at hip width put your hands here measure your wrist go down three inches um, and that's the mark that your heels are going to have to cross so actually it doesn't matter if your hands are wide i just go with a comfortable uh, strong, whatever, wherever you feel strongest, you're probably not strong there and you're probably not strong here. So somewhere in here. Um, I always turn my fingers out a little bit to alleviate stress on the wrist. And then when you are upside down, if you point your toes, you're gonna be in a, in a bad spot getting your heel over the line. So flex your toes. Flex your toes back down to you. And that's gonna help out. All right, that's a ton of stuff. Um, I would just start cycling this through your brain, thinking about each individual movement and how you're gonna address them, the things that you're gonna do, belts and equipment and all that, um, and come in prepared and practice this stuff. All right, pacing tips. I kinda broke it down to advanced, intermediate, beginner. So if, when I say advanced, I mean like kinda top, like you're, you're killing it pretty much. Um, I wrote for the deadlift, three sets of 15 plus a 10. So you get to 45 and then you just add 10 more. Um, if, for, if you needed to bust that last one down to a 10 and then a five, that last 15 that is, um, that's fine too. But the point is, is you can probably handle decent sets. That 225, 155 isn't gonna bug you much. 
you could probably do three sets of 15, very short rest, just enough to just reset and then get back on it. Um, for intermediate, I'm thinking much going smaller much sooner. So three sets of 10 and then fives. I really, really, really wanna stress that you don't, you, you kinda need to consider your strengths and weaknesses. If you are a really awesome deadlifter, I mean, you're 450 plus uh, guy's side and then 300 plus on the girl's side, it means your deadlift um, is pretty strong and your posterior chain is pretty strong. So you, you, you could probably do the bigger sets, but if you're not there and your deadlift isn't that great, be cautious, not cautious, or just break down into smaller sets sooner and keep your movement cleaner. Don't extend, if your deadlift's only 350 or 315 or something, don't try to take this 225 for a ride of 20 reps and just break yourself down. You're just gonna really pay for it on the wall ball and then the row. So save it, keep it tight, short, uh, short work periods, quick rest periods, but small sets. So 10, 10, 10, five by five. Um, and then beginner, if you're really kind of one of the people that can go borderline scaled or RX, just do 11 sets of five. Ask your judge to help count for you. Just tell them, hey, I'm gonna do fives and count off 11 sets for me. Five, drop it, five. So just focus on that. And then fives could even become threes and twos. The wall ball actually, I, I think, should end up looking a lot like the uh, deadlift in terms of rep, with the exception of, again, advanced. If you're advanced, you might be able to, to go right to 35 wall balls and then finish it off with 20. Otherwise, probably something like you did on the deadlift, three by 15 and a 10, intermediate, I guess just play it off how your back is feeling. Keep your back feeling all right, but understand, you know, this is probably gonna be like the middle of the workout. So at some point, you're just gonna have to let loose. So probably 10, 10, 10. If you got another 10, go for it. If not, bust down to fives. But again, resting on the wall, super short rest, um, and just get through it. And then beginner, same as deadlift, fives. Row, I think these numbers are right. I wanna say around the advanced, you're gonna be rowing uh, 1,100 uh, calories per hour, I think it is. Um, 1,100, 900, 1,800. I don't know what that's gonna be. I guess it kinda of depends on your strengths and what kind of rower you are. Again, I think the most important thing is just to keep on chugging along. So have something in your head, row hard for five, rest for three. And then handstand push-ups, like I said, a lot of us aren't even gonna get to it. So if you do get to it, obviously just get as many as you can. Um, you know, if you're advanced, probably go big set, big set until you hit failure, and then just start plugging away twos and threes until time runs out. Um, already talked about that. Okay, equipment, shoes. I think Olympic lifting shoes would really help out. They're not gonna hurt you in anything, they'll help you out in the row and they'll help you out in the wall ball for sure, maybe even deadlift. So all these shoes is what I'd go with. A belt, knee sleeves, wrist wraps if you think you're gonna get to handstand push-ups. That's all I got there, chalk on the deadlift. Mobility, glutes, hamstrings, and calves. The reason I wrote calves there is just because calves are, uh, can sometimes, help with getting more flexibility out of your hamstrings. So basically this whole posterior chain, in order to get the best position we can on this deadlift and alleviate as much pressure on the back, we really wanna be um, have all this stuff loose so that we can sit our hips back and be on it versus having our back round and do a lot of work. So we really wanna get that stuff uh, stretched out, pigeon stretch, couch stretch, any sort of lunge stretch, stretching the calves. Again, like I said it before, is something that you should be doing consistently, but in the 24 hours leading up to your workout, just keep that stuff loose a few times a day, hit a stretch. Also wanna hit that upper back thoracic stretch. We're gonna be doing wall balls. Really, I see that more as breathing um, and just having like the ribs and this upper back all loose and stuff. So that's something you could do. You get over a foam roller and extend the hands, reach and grab something and just stretch in the upper back. 
Finally, a uh, sample warm-up that we can do. Um, basically get the blood flowing with five to ten minutes of a row, easy, uh, row or run. Just We want to make sure we're getting pretty deep into the hips. And then I got four to five times through, small sets here, five shoulder roll to V-sets. That's where you're rolling back on your shoulder, sit up tall towards your toes in a V fashion. So five of those. Goblet squats. I would... Um, me in particular, I like taking the wider stance on the wall ball, so I would be warming my squat up with a wider stance. The reason is because it's a shorter distance. So warm up some goblet squats, paying a lot of attention to being upright as possible as you're holding the kettlebell. And then handstand kicks, kick up. So just practice being smooth and efficient, kicking up. And then obviously gradually I would start uh, taking these warm up moves into the movements here begin warming up the deadlift, building it up to weight, warming up my wall ball, um, maybe a little row, and handstand push-ups if you think you're gonna get to it. So that's all I got. Nutrition's the same thing that I've been saying the past few weeks. Just eat good, get some good post-workout nutrition. Um, it's a longer one if you want to, um, if you wanna do caffeine and you do it all the time, fine. I, I would likely not in this, this workout just because it is on the longer side, post, uh, it's 13 minutes. So it is on the longer side. I don't like doing caffeine on long workouts. So that is all I got. Um, good luck to everybody. Have fun.